attributes of functions. Let's look at a few examples of functions. On the left, we have a linear function. On the right, we have an exponential function. One attribute is the x-intercept. And the x-intercept is the point where a function crosses the x-axis. For the first function, we notice it crosses the x-axis here at the point negative 1.5 comma 0. On the second function, it crosses the x-axis at the origin at the point 0 comma 0. The y-intercept, that's the point where a function crosses the y-axis. So on the, the first function, it crosses the y-axis here at the point 0 comma 3. And the second function crosses the y-axis again at the origin, again at the point 0 comma 0. Another attribute we'll look at is, is an asymptote. And an asymptote is a line that a graph approaches but doesn't actually touch. At the beginning of this year, we'll look mostly at functions that have vertical or horizontal asymptotes. But later in the year, we'll see that asymptotes can also be oblique or slanted as well. The first function doesn't have an asymptote, but the second function, the exponential function, has an asymptote at the line y equals negative 1. So the function gets closer and closer to this line, but never quite gets there. Let's look at another function. This is a quadratic or parabola. So here we'll look at attributes such as minimum, which is the lowest value of a function. So here our lowest point is 0, 0, and our minimum value is 0. Our maximum is the highest value of a function. And for our quadratic, at least the one pictured, our maximum value, it doesn't have a maximum because it goes to infinity. Symmetry is another attribute. A function has symmetry if a reflection or rotation carries its graph onto itself. So here with the quadratic, we do have a line of symmetry. And this line is at x equals 0 for this particular quadratic function. If we were to fold the function on this line, it would fold onto itself. So we call this the axis of symmetry, and that is x equals 0. Okay, for example, let's look at the gra let's graph and analyze f of x equals negative 2x plus 1. So we'll do a quick review of how to, to graph linear functions. So first we're going to look at the, the b, the y-intercept. And we'll put a point on the y-axis at 1, because that's our y-intercept. Then we'll look at our m, or our slope. Here it's negative 2. We can make it into a fraction by putting it over 1. So our slope is negative 2 over 1, which means that we go down 2 and right 1. So I'll go down 2, right 1, and put a point. And I can keep doing that to get some more points. And then I can draw in a line. So here is our graph of f of x equals negative 2x plus 1. So let's analyze it. What's our domain? Well, it's a linear function. If, if we look for the lowest x value, it's negative infinity. The highest x value is positive infinity. So our domain is all real numbers or negative infinity to positive infinity. Our range is, again, all real numbers negative infinity to positive infinity. It goes down forever and goes up forever. Our y-intercept, well, we identified that when we were graphing this function. So the y-intercept is at 0, 1. Our x-intercept is right here where the graph crosses the x-axis. Now, it might be hard to estimate it from the graph, so we can solve this algebraically. Whenever we're solving for an intercept, we set the opposite variable equal to 0. So for the x-intercept, set y equal to 0. 
So I could take my f of x, which is y, substitute 0 in for it, set that equal to negative 2x plus 1, and I can solve. I can add 2x to both sides, get 2x equals 1, divide both sides by 2, x equals 1 half. So that's why I can be sure that my x-intercept is 1 half comma 0. Okay, so this function doesn't have a minimum or maximum overall because it goes down to negative infinity, it goes up to positive infinity, but we can look for a max or min value on a specific interval. So here we'll look for the min and max on the interval from negative 4 to 1. And this interval refers to the x values or the domain values of the function. Okay, so for the maximum, if I look at the graph, our maximum is going to occur when x is smaller or at negative 4. So here where I put my point. To find that value, let's find f of negative 4. So we'll substitute negative 4 in for x. I get negative 2 times negative 4 plus 1, which is 9. So this point is negative 4, 9, and my max value is 9. Our min value, according to the graph, will occur on this interval when x is 1. So right here. To figure out what that value is, we'll substitute 1 in for x. f of 1 equals negative 2 times 1 plus 1, or negative 1. So our minimum value is negative 1.